Hello, hello. Welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Candace, and I am starting a large cut flower garden this year, and I'm going to sell bouquets in addition to fruits and vegetables from my property. In today's video, I have some seeds I want to start. I want to bring you guys along with me for that. And then if we have time, I will see if we can give you another update on the seedlings that I already have growing. So if you're interested, then stay tuned. All right, so as you can see here, I already have my tray filled with seed starting mix. And I have seven varieties of Lysianthus we're gonna start out with today. If you saw my last seedling update video, you saw that I killed some of my Lysianthus, which if you know anything about Lysianthus, you know that's not exactly very hard to do, uh, but we, are going to try not to do that this go around. I actually had pretty good luck with my Lysianthus germination the first go around, uh, but I misted them too hard. Now I have this, which I unboxed in a garden equipment video, unboxing video, and I really love this thing. Um, I actually have two of them now because I love them so much. Uh, they are so, it's so much faster to water with them. I'm so happy that I bought them. Not only is it so much faster and more efficient to water your seedlings, but depending on, you know, how, how much you pump it, um, it really depends on how fast it comes out. This one is supposed to do the same thing, but it, it's, um, the adjustment nozzle doesn't work as well. But either way, they're both they're both uh, good misters, and I, I absolutely love them. I was using just one of those hand, like, manual pump sprayers, and I was holding it ex extremely too close to the tray. And Lysianthus are so small. I thought I was still misting dirt, but I was actually misting very small, tiny seedlings and then uh, uprooting them in the process. And here I am, and here I'm just using this art line garden marker. I got this off of Amazon. This was also in the unboxing video with the garden equipment. It is, it's a UV resistant marker, so it shouldn't fade in the sun. All right, so I have my seeds out and I just checked my garden plan and looked at how many I need of everything, of each one. So now it is time to get started. I'm gonna go ahead and water this tray in really well before we get started. I wanna make sure to get this dirt as flat as possible. If you're not misting very carefully, the dirt is going to move around and kinda of go towards the center. I think that was another problem I had that um, they were like trying to sprout, but then every time I misted them, they were getting covered back up with dirt. The other thing I wanted to do differently that I'm just now remembering is I didn't want to use any perlite or vermiculite this time because it's hard to tell if you're looking at a pelleted seed or if you're looking at vermiculite or perlite. Dang it. I meant to do it this way so that I could put the label in like that. I did that last time. Shoot. Why didn't y'all remind me? Actually, I'm going to use a little tip is to use freezer tape. 
instead of using one of these because it's hard to keep the humidity dome on very good when those big labels are in there and either tape it to the outside of the tray or to that uh, cell. Sorry if you are at a different angle, but I ran out of memory. I think where it cut me off was after doing the Dublini white. And the only thing that I said after that was that the seeds keep wanting to stick to my finger because I have the, the trays are so wet which for Lizzyanthus, they do like to be extremely moist. I was really scared that my seeds were gonna rot. Everything that I've read, they've said to keep them extremely, extremely wet. Some people even put water in the bottom tray and let them continuously wick up the water because that's, that's just how wet they need to be to germinate. Um, they also need light to germinate if you didn't see my last video. Uh, do not cover them after you uh, place the seeds in the cell. You just want to put your humidity dome on and then place them under your grow lights. All right, guys. So it is actually the next day. I'm needing to plant Bells of Ireland, Dusty Miller, and Asters today, as well as the Snapdragons and the Lysianthus. So I'm going to see how much I can film for you guys. Uh, my husband will be back with our kids here shortly. The varieties that I'm going to be sowing today are Madame Butterfly Pink, Costa Silver, Potomac Lavender, Rose, Tall Rust Resistant Mixed Colors, and then First Lady Mixed Colors. I do have other varieties. These are just the ones that I'm going to be planting today. I have the... Bells of Ireland. This is the first time I'm going to be growing this, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It is so pretty. The flowers are actually the little white things inside of the uh, bell-shaped, I think they're called bracts. And then I'm going to be planting two varieties of Dusty Miller. The one from Johnny's is New Look, and then this one is called Silver Dust. And then the asters I'm going to be growing are Lady Coral Lavender, this, and it looks like they're here, and then this yellow. And then for now, I'm just going to put some of this freezer tape on my table and write what I'm putting in, it, in each row, and then I will end up taping it to the side here. All right, guys, so it got a little bit loud once the kids got home. So I'm just going to do a voiceover just on this section where I'm talking about how to plant the seeds. And then we will move on to doing an update on the plants that I have growing on in my grow room. Now, all of the seeds that I'm planting today, except for the asters, need light to germinate. So if you plant these, you don't want to cover them with any kind of seed starter mix. You just want to put them directly under your grow light, except for the asters. You want to sprinkle a little bit of seed starting mix uh, over the top of those seeds. Now, the Bells of Ireland, those need cold stratification. So there's two things you can do there. You can either put the seed packet in your freezer for two weeks. You can also put the entire tray after you have planted the seeds in the freezer. Um, some people say that they get better luck with that. You can also put some in a wet paper towel or on a wet paper towel and then uh, in a Ziploc bag and then put those in the freezer and then plant them. Uh, but I'm going to try to just do them without planting them and putting them in the freezer. I'm going to just try the putting the seed packet in the freezer for two weeks. I also read that the Bells of Ireland can take a little while to germinate. So if you don't see any growth after a week or two, then don't worry. Just give it a little bit more time and just try to be patient. One other thing worth mentioning is with the Bells of Ireland, uh, they have a taproot. Uh, I don't know 
too much about that, but I do know the gist of it is instead of having shallow roots uh, that spread out, say, six to eight inches deep into the soil, it has a really long, deep taproot that goes deep down in the soil to bring up nutrients. Uh, so usually things like that don't do well being, you know, seeded in a plug tray and then transplanted out. Uh, they recommend to direct sow things like that or to at least start it out in like, say, a two or three inch pot. That way, when you go to pull it out of the, the container and transplant it, you're not disturbing the roots at all. Uh, but I'm still going to give this a try because I have so many things to grow for the cut flower garden uh, that I just don't have the space for too many things in pots. And I'm not going to direct sow because... Again, my springs get so hot so quickly. I'm afraid that if I waited until my last frost date and direct sow sowed these, that I just wouldn't get any blooms off of them. Uh, things like, you know, sweet peas and snapdragons and things like that, that like the, the cooler weather, uh, once it gets really hot, they're going to suffer and they're not really going to produce any blooms for you. Uh, just like with tomatoes, uh, those aren't you know, those don't like cold weather, uh, but they don't like extreme heat either. And if I don't get a good head start on those, then in the summer, whenever I start getting temperatures that are almost 100 degrees, then the, the, the blossoms, instead of turning into fruit, they just kind of, you know, dry up on the plant and fall off. But given that they do have that taproot, I will go ahead and pot them up into some two or three inch containers uh, before too long so that they don't get root bound and I don't disturb their roots too much. Uh, it shouldn't be too long and I will be transplanting my sweet peas and my ranunculus outside, which I cannot wait for. I'm so excited to be finally getting some things in the ground. Uh, so once I free up some space in my grow room, then I will be able to pot them up into larger containers. And then here are my two trays of ranunculus looking really, really good. I am going to be planting these outside very shortly. And then in this tray, I have my eucalyptus and my sweet peas. They're doing really good. They are, some of them are sending off like a ton of side shoots. This one here, it must have been the first one that germinated. It is looking really good. And then this is actually a couple dahlias that I started from seed and all the other ones died. Um, I don't know what's going on, but Every time it's time to water them, their leaves like shrivel up and then it dies. And I know that I'm not overwatering it because I'm the first ones I may have, uh, but these last, this last set, I know that I'm not overwatering them and they're still doing that. So I don't know what's going on with that. And then here is our beautiful tray of snapdragons and carnations and kale and broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Um, these are overdue to be potted up also. I have to get my other shelf up though so that I'll have room. Or here is some dill looking really healthy i'm probably going to thin it out a little bit but other than that it's looking really good all right and then this is what these trays are looking like we've got our lizzie anthus i have some lavender and then i have some bishop's flower back there all right guys well that is all that i have growing so far Make sure you subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all of the other cut flowers that I'm going to be growing in the next few weeks and as well as the vegetables for the vegetable garden. I have about three more weeks and then I will be beginning to start tomatoes and all the other vegetables. And then let me know in the comments, do you grow flowers? Do you grow cut flowers? Do you grow vegetables? I'm really interested in do, do most of you do flower gardening or uh, vegetable gardening um, and that will really help me out um, to know you know what kind of videos maybe I should be putting out more and if you enjoyed the video I really would appreciate a thumbs up it really does help my channel it tells YouTube that people are enjoying the videos and then they will show them to more people but that's going to be all for this video thank you and I will talk to you in the next one these asters are much these these asters are...